Hi, I'm Arlen Walker, and I'm live from Pelham's Wasteland, and today I have got another overview for you guys. This one is called Ballad of the Longbow, a medieval role-playing game of dash, heroics, and the struggle against villainy. Um, so Ballad of the Longbow is a role-playing game by um, Nordic Weasel Games, who, if you don't know Nordic Weasel Games, they make, um, or Ivan Sorensen, the guy behind it, makes um, a lot of war games, kind of small, sort of um, designed for use with, uh, you know, any, whatever figures you got, that sort of thing. There's um, Trench Hammer, it's World War One. Hammer of Democracy is World War Two. The the Five Men series is all kind of small skirmish individual based figures. The um, uh, I can't remember the other. No End in Sight is a um, kind of platoon individual figures, but it's more kind of command and control. Um, very little. I I like that one a lot, um, particularly because it's kind of low casualties from direct fire from kind of most fire high casualties from kind of focused flanking fire that sort of thing so it really puts an emphasis on kind of getting you know getting the enemy suppressed with uh mo with your one group and flanking them with another group all of that sort of stuff so uh that that game is is really cool anyway ballad of the longbow is an RPG, although it has some wargamey elements to it, by which I mean the the health system in particular feels very much out of a war game to me. Um, but it's pretty cool. It is a game that is based um, principally on stories like Robin Hood, right? That's the the Ballad of the Longbow part of it. But um, also William Tell, Three Musketeers, Arthurian Mythology. There's a discussion of some of the TV so shows that um, inspired it, some movies, all that sort of stuff. Here, let me read out this section. Players take the role of assorted heroes working to foil the villains and overly... Oh, Players take the role of assorted heroes working to foil the villains and ultimately overcome them, whether through a cunning ploy, a final battle, or disrupting the villain's plans until the rightful state of affairs can be reasserted. Player characters are assumed to be heroic and at least working for the greater good while opposing tyranny uh, and oppression. The game is aimed at fairly quick, fun gaming with character-driven moments, but is primarily a traditional role-playing game with a few nods to concepts from modern indie gaming. It assumes a fairly conventional role for the GM and the players. Support for miniatures is provided for combat uses, but is not required to play the game. Um, anyway, this is a fun, a fun little game. It uses all D20 rolls, almost every, well, everything is d20 roll under almost always it's roll under your skill value for that but you want to roll high so a um a roll that is 10 or higher and still succeeds meaning it's still under your um skill value is better than a roll of one to nine that succeeds and a roll of 15 or higher that succeeds is the best you can do so i think they call that um uh, a, a finesse or a, fa a fine success and a perfect success. So a fine success, 10 or higher, this still succeeds. And a perfect success, 15 or higher, this still succeeds. So it's roll under, but roll high, basically. Much like Pendragon and some other um, games that are there. Um, it, anyway, it's uh, pretty straightforward, pretty cool. Um, there's discussion of what you should do in terms of getting this to play. There is uh, pretty much, there's essentially no custom art in this book. There's uh, a little bit of kind of images and stuff like that. As you can, if you're on YouTube, you can see here, there's some some pictures um, of environment sort of stuff. Here's some scenario ideas. Then we have character types. Um, character types define, they're sort of like, much like classes, they basically define what type of character your character is. And part of the expectation is that if you're playing around a table, you can print out these character type sheets and just hand them out to whoever wants to be whichever type. 
Um, you get one of these character special abilities, and they're usable once per gaming session is the idea. So based on your type, you have a choice of three different abilities that you can choose, and um, there's some rules for advancement later on. And advancement is primarily upping skills a little bit so you can get a higher skill value to roll under and gradually getting these um, more of these special abilities. So, for instance, the knight has um, champion. You may declare that you are taking up the cause of some worthy, prefer some worthy preferably someone beautiful and kind. While doing so, you may turn a failed skill check into a success. So that's the idea is that's a knight ability, right? That's something that the knight can do that's sort of special, breaks the rules. That's sort of how the, the abilities work is they basically all break the rules in some way or they guarantee success or they turn a failed check into a success or something like that. Um, so we have the knight, the outlaw, the noble, the yeoman, the clergy, the veteran, the retainer, the scholar, the forester, the entertainer, the beggar, and that's it. That's all the character options. And then there are some special, some cool rules for if, for instance, you see your character as like a knight, but who has some overlap with, say, the entertainer, you can, for your third and your fifth ability choices, you can choose something outside of the list for your um, specific character type. So that allows you to do something sort of like multi-classing, um, basically allows you to um, create a more varied character, right? A, a character with some neat special abilities that are not just basically their class. Anyway, um, these sheets also, they have space for wounds and reputation, which is basically what you track in terms of reputation, you track in terms of uh, advancing, and wounds you track in terms of obviously getting wounded. And then this is the skill list right here. Agility, alertness, archery, brawn, charm, crafting, deception, education, etiquette, fighting, horsemanship, religion, sleight of hand, stealth, and trading. That's all the skills, and when you create your character, there is a skill, um, a starting skill value array, and you can see that here on page 21, it's the highest you get is 15, and the lowest you get is 2, and basically that, um, that is what determines your starting skills. You just assign points to, you assign your 15s to whatever you think you're good at and your two to whatever you think you're not good at. And the ones in between, basically you assign them um, based on uh, what you think they should be. So very, very straightforward character creation. Skill advancement, skills cannot exceed a score of 18. And after every gaming session, each player may select one skill to advance by plus one. Um, there's a little thing here. The GM may allow any skill to be selected or may require players to select skills they attempted to use during the game session or for which they would have a reasonable chance to practice or study. Basically, if you want to do more, um, BRP style advancement, you can. Um, and I like, that's one of the things I really like about the, all the Nordic Weasel products and, and this game in particular is there's a lot of, um, ideas that aren't necessarily prescriptive right so things like this that say like if you want to tweak your game to be a little more like this here's how you do it right and that's really cool in my opinion that's a, a really nice it's nice to have those um ideas laid out and explicit so that a as the gm you don't have to come up with them on your own and b for the players the GM can say, look, these are the special rules we're playing with. You can find them in these places in the book, that sort of thing. Anyway, skill resolution, roll a d20 under your specific skill. And then there's a thing about using um, the most specific skill. So if you're moving quietly through the woods, don't use agility, use stealth. Because even though both of them could be useful, stealth is more specific. Um, and then there's the thing succeeding with finesse or a fine success and succeeding with uh, perfection or a perfect success, which, as I mentioned, those are basically high rolls that still succeeded. So as a starting character, you'll only have one, maybe two skills that you can 
possibly succeed perfectly at, and that's rolling a 15 on the money when you have a 15 in the score. But obviously, as your character advances, they'll have more chances to, you'll have chances to up your skills so that you could hypothetically get more perfect successes. Anyway, um, failures, complex tasks, opposed roles, helping, exceptional situations, time taken, skill explanations, um, specific situations. There's some some guidelines for specific um, situations that are likely to come up in the game. Um, There's the combat system. So the combat system is neat. Um, it's a little bit, uh, well, there's there's rules for miniatures and there's not rules for miniatures. And there's a couple of places where you have to read both of them, even if you're playing without miniatures, because you need to know kind of the numbers of stuff. But basically the way it works is that it's phased actions. So you have the quick action phase, which is everybody who succeeded at an agility test or an alertness test um, on the player's side, and then the enemies go, and you have the slow action phase, which is everybody who failed from the player characters, and then the ally action phase, which is anybody who is like a, a henchman or a retainer or somebody like that, and then the morale test phase, where morale gets tested for everybody for whom it should be tested. Um, and then there's a rule that simplified initiative, you can, instead of rolling initiative every time, you can just have the characters go first, and that'll still work pretty well. Because that'll And that'll make the characters feel more heroic, right? If they can always act before the enemy gets a chance to act. Anyway, actions, perform one action or vice versa, must complete their activities when they are active. So basically it's... Um, this is, I think, comes from the sort of wargaming side of Nordic Weasel that basically you have to, you have to, there's explicit rules for, you have to do your whole turn when it's your turn and then it goes to the next person's turn or all that sort of stuff. And you can move, um, uh, there's basically, um, Moving at is 10 meters as a movement action, or if you're in a coat of mail and shield, you can move six meters, so basically heavy armor. Um, and then all of the different stuff you can do. Attacking and defending. Attacking is basically um, just rolling under um, your fighting skill or your archery skill. Um, fighting for melee, archery for distance, any kind of distance, including like javelin throwing or bows or crossbows, anything like that. Um, then there's a defense rule and there's rules for saying um, if you want minion characters, because there's basically three tiers of enemy units, minion characters may not defend on an all, a special rule. Basically, if you want your characters to just be able to mow down hordes of enemies um, that will work well. Otherwise, if you want it to feel more of a kind of realistically defending themselves style, right? Because most people in combat spend a lot of their resources defending themselves because they don't want to die, um, that sort of thing. Um, evading strikes with agility, parrying with their um, fighting skill, all that sort of stuff. Resolving strikes, and then there's um, roll to wound. So it's basically roll to hit, roll to negate the hit from the uh, parrier, assuming they still have parries left, and then roll to wound. Um, and roll to wound is basically based on the um, skill value of the attacker. The skill value is made higher based on the... Um, type of weapon and is reduced based on the type of armor so that basically means that higher skilled characters will be able to wound more often but it still sort of matters what you use so like using an arming sword which is a military weapon you add plus four to the fighting value of the 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 hitter um in most cases, a strike against a hero uses a fixed damage of 8, reduced to 6 if the hero is wearing a coat of mail, which is basically if you're using um, 
if you're using minions, just use those flat numbers instead of calculating out things. Um, strikes that do not wound just knock the characters around a little bit. And the idea is that um, depending on the tier of character, um, remember there are three tiers of enemies and uh, the player characters fit into these tiers also. Um, they have an effect for wounds. So, for instance, the player character who takes their first wound, there's no penalty. The second wound, there's a minus two penalty to all skills. And at the third wound, they're out of action. Now, they're not necessarily and not likely dead, because there's a whole thing in here about um, they're probably not dead. Uh, note on tone, I think, has some stuff about it. Um, morale, training conditions, getting hurt and getting better. Um, one of the ideas being that, you know, in the way that Robin Hood gets captured a lot, but he doesn't ever seem to get killed because the sheriff always seems to want to ha have a public execution, that's the sort of tone that we're going for in this type of game, that that third wound probably isn't a death wound for the player character. Um, then some stuff about equipment, and it's basically just, you know, use what you think is appropriate for the character based on what you start with here's some uh price lists there's a price list for like buying stuff and then there's a way to just calculate based on your character's income kind of what you can afford um game progression skill increases good deeds this is how um the game progresses is that you remember you can increase your skill after every session and then good deeds um are basically how you get more um chances to get abilities and that sort of stuff and then there's reputation reputation is just basically a modifier on your skills when you're doing something um that your reputation would help with so like if you're a Robin Hood type character and you go to a village and ask them for help because you're Robin Hood, they're more likely to give you help than otherwise, that sort of thing. Um, some stuff for non-player characters, grunts, experts, and major characters. Um, villains have abilities of their own, which is really cool. Villains are the highest tier um, enemies and basically they have special abilities of their own like, um, that work similar to character abilities. Um, and then there's allies, helpers, retainers, animals, all this sort of stuff. And then a whole section on game mastering, which is cool, um, which gives a lot of stuff about trying to establish the, the tone, trying to... Um, some other stuff that I really like, like, for instance, this truth as we know it section. Truth as we know it is basically saying if you want the player characters to interact with non-player characters regularly, the non-player characters who are mostly trustworthy should probably tell the truth. Because basically, basically the argument being that if player characters get lied to all the time, they're just going to stop interacting with the NPCs, right? And I think that's a, a really good point, and that, that ties into this idea of methodology to create the kind of game experience you want. Um, anyway, all sorts of stuff. There's some sections on like ambushing, investigations and pacing, assorted situations, reaction roles, optional rules. This is the, the grunts don't parry is in here and fine-grained opposed roles instead of doing the, the degree of success opposed roles. Um, narrative push and pull, and this is sort of adding a, a narrative metacurrency thing called a lucky break to make your game a little less trad, if you want. And some designer notes um, from Ivan Sorensen. I'm not going to read it out. Um, to you guys, if you you might be able to read it on the video, but it probably um, you can just read designer notes. I don't think the bit rate's high enough to actually read the text. Anyway, Ivan Sorensen's a really cool dude. Um, he makes really fun games. Ballad of the Longbow is a neat little game from him. 
that is about playing kind of swashbuckling Robin Hood type characters. And it's pretty cool. Uses that very simple D20 roll under system. Everything is D20 roll under even damage. And um, my assumption is that this game would play very quickly and smoothly. I think that's, and I think that's the goal, right? Is to have a, a relatively simple quick and smooth playing game that you can just kind of get into easily. You just pass out the character sheets to your players, tell them to write down the numbers that they feel are appropriate for their character um, in terms of skills based on the, the listed numbers and just go from there. Everybody has a D20 so they can just roll for their skills when it becomes time. And yeah, you go and play Ballad of the Longbow. Anyway, um, really cool stuff. Uh, I like this game a lot. I think it was $10 on DriveThruRPG, maybe 5 I don't remember for certain. Um, it's been a little while since I bought it. Um, but yeah, I so one of the things, um, it doesn't have any, any kind of bespoke artwork or anything like that, um, which pretty much all of the Nordic Weasel games don't have bespoke artwork. Many of them have like pictures of things. Um, in the war games, he'll have pictures of, of miniatures and things like that, but um, not really, you know, custom artwork and all that sort of stuff. I that doesn't bother me at all. Um, I am much more interested in having a game that I am excited to play than having artwork that I'm excited to look at in a game book. But I know that bothers some people. Some people don't like paying for PDFs without artwork or don't like paying very much for PDFs without artwork, in which case this may not be for you. But if you are interested in a fun, quick play game that um, is designed for, um, you know, playing, playing some quick and easy Robin Hood adventures. And uh, if you are interested in buying it from a neat little um, indie indie designer um ballad of the longbow is a really cool option so yeah i think that is everything so i will end by saying if you want to get in contact with me i am at cows from palace on twitter i'm on anchor anchor.fm slash pelham's wasteland and i'm you am on youtube live from pelham's wasteland is the youtube channel um Leave a message on Anchor or leave a comment on YouTube, all of that sort of stuff. It's great to interact with the community. Um, aside from that, I've been Arlen Walker. I've been live from Pelham's Wasteland, and I will see you next time. Take care, everybody.